Today, at last, my children, your long and cherished dream is being realized. And I am overjoyed at being the one to bless this sacred union. Do you, John Baxter, take this girl to be your lawful wedded wife, for better or worse, till death do you part? I do, yes. And do you, my child, take this man, John Baxter, to be your lawful wedded husband, for better or worse, till death do you part? Yes! I therefore pronounce you man and wife. And now, my children, you can give each other a kiss. <laughs> Come on, Beba, wake up. Rise and shine. Hey, come on, you can't fool me. You were tossing and turning all night long. Fuck you, darling. Tell the truth. You were having nightmares again, weren't you? How many times do I have to tell you not to eat bananas for dinner? I get dressed. Okay, okay, I'll help you. There we go. Hey, old buddy, you about ready? Morning, Howie. Yeah, hey, do me a favor, will you? Tell Bongo to warm up the engines. What are we gonna do about the pork one? It's running rough, huh? Yeah, I know. I had Greaseball look at it yesterday. Oh, are you serious? I figure it needs a general overhaul. Oh, that's what Greaseball said. But then he's been saying that ever since he came back from mechanic school. <laughs> That's okay, Howie. I checked it myself. It's good for another 50 hours. In fact, if you want, you can fly today. Oh, no, no. I'm driving the turret. <laughs> you want to know what Greaseball said about the Land Rover? northeast towards the river bend. Sorry, Johnny, no elephants. I got a request for rhino. Nothing doing, Howie. Nobody told the rhinos that. They're on vacation. But I got a special on giraffes. There's about eight of them headed east out of section three. They're beauties. You can see there's two males, three females. No, check that. There's two females. Uh, it's hard to tell for sure. Well, they'll go flying low for a closer look. By the way, old buddy, how's the plane making up? Land Rover's doing okay. Greaseball must have got a run. Hey, Johnny, you want to be careful over the pool. Those bound traps are dangerous. Don't worry about me, pal. First I'll get us a bad head cold. Catch you later. Hey, John. Morning, Howie. Hey, listen to this, will you? Yeah, it says here the jets are taking over. The props are a thing of the past. Jets, huh? Yeah. No, sir, not for me. You're not getting me up in anything that runs on hot air. I'll stick to propellers. At least I know when it falls off. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Everybody ready? Let's go. Who are you talking to you? All right, we're going now to visit the village of a primitive tribe. This ain't Disneyland. Are they cannibals? I don't know, ma'am. So far, none of our clients have complained about that. But I don't suggest you hang around at mealtimes. <laughs> well, <I don't laughs> Does your little monkey always wear pants? Yes, thanks to the missionaries. They don't want to corrupt anyone's morals. <laughs> How's it going, Bongo? Bongo, I have you with toothache. Go to a dentist. Oh. What are those, ostriches? No, ma'am, big turkeys. Oh. Hey, Johnny, everything under control down there? Affirmative, Howie. How are things on top? Well, it's still got the propellers. Listen, I got the Batonga's village in sight. The uh, natives seem restless. 
Let the tear clarify, will you? I brought the rifle. Don't worry. We'll go on in. Over. Don't be a hero, buddy. You're our number. Won't be the first time, Howie. I'll be talking to you. Hey, Mac, I don't see what's so great about the baton. As if you don't mind, I just as soon give it a Anything hit. you want. We'll pick you up on the way back. If we can find you again, that is. Come on, get out. Yeah. Well, what's that supposed to mean, if you find me? Well, you know, with all the lions around here. Lions? And you want me to get out? <laughs> <laughs> what an extraordinary animal. She acts just like a human being. Oh, anyone else want to get out? Hey, Beaver! Beaver! Where are you going? Hey, Beaver, there are all kinds of wild animals out there. The lady didn't mean to insult you. Come back here. We're going now. What's got into that chimp, anyway? If there's one thing she can't stand, it's being compared to a human being. Harvey, will you sit down and okay, shut up? Okay. Uh, by the way, It'd be better if you all keep your cameras out of sight. The Batangas are very nervous. They don't like being photographed. Mm -hmm. I remember last time I was out here, I almost lost two of the party. Dear, wouldn't it be better if we had stayed home? Separate from the group, don't look them in the face, and above all, no sudden moves. I suggest you walk around on tiptoe. Hi there. Murachi! Ah! 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 He's even got his knife and fork. Um, I better get in the Jeep and don't open the doors, no matter what. Interested, there are fine examples of native crafts on sale. Oh, I feel free to look around. Excuse me, what's she saying? Uh, Paki? Travelers checks, get dollar or get pounds. She says she'll accept travelers checks in dollars or English pounds. Jellico. But uh, go easy next time. Will you? you damn near strangle me. Something is worth doing, it's worth doing well. It gets harder and harder to fool tourists. Excuse me, John. I must go now. What's your hurry? I have to see an accountant. It's not easy with 75 villages on payroll. Native Union now asking double wages for overtime on Saturdays. They got you jumping, huh? In today's world, you have to keep on your toes. You said it. They grow things, same as anywhere, you know, potatoes, fresh vegetables, onions. Uh, where I come from, you get this stuff out of cans. Well, they tried that, but they couldn't get the cans to grow. Oh!
Where's Biba, John? I don't know. Every now and then she takes off to visit relatives, I guess. Speaking of relatives, how's your brother? We didn't know with us anymore. We had to send him away from Kai. He's a bad man. He now stay with all the bad men like himself. Yeah, well, what's he up to? Maybe he thinks he can become king of Batongas. He steals, burns villages, kills all people. That son of a bitch. Oh, mama, no doubt. Oh, sorry. That's a saying we have, nothing personal. What are they saying? White witch doctor visit my wife. Say all go well. All right, I heard you were going to be a father again in a month. Congratulations. Thank you. If my child will be next thing. I see. And uh, what if it's a girl child? If white witch doctor plays same joke on me again, I kill him, wife, and 11 daughters he already brought me. Trying to tell me something? Huh? Wait a second. Look, none of you get out, huh? I'll be right back. Hands in the air. Drop the gun. Listen, why were you shooting at me, huh? Wait a minute. Let go of me. Look, let's talk about it. Can you make it? I'm all right, thank you. It's not much further. You mean you can't remember anything? Not even my name, Nassi. My head is just a black emptiness. Well, you, you didn't forget how to throw a left hook. Not bad at all. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid of everything and everyone. I just don't know how to explain. Maeba. I can remember the word Maeba, but I don't know why. Maeba? Well, that's something. You gotta begin somewhere. What's it mean, anyway? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Why am I in pajamas? Yeah. By the way, where are we? What do you mean, where are we? In Africa. In Africa? Yeah, Africa. You know, that big piece of real estate shaped like an upside-down sock? Now you're being sarcastic. I don't understand. How did I get here? Yeah, and in your pajamas, too. Boy, are you ever going to give those tourists something to talk about? You know, miss, you're lucky Beaver found you. Oh, by the way, is it miss or missus? I don't know. I don't even remember that. Oh, there's a couple things we can say for sure. You're a woman and you're beautiful. Thank you for the compliment. You're not so bad yourself. Thanks. There's a friend to stay a movie at the Roxy. Sure. Wouldn't mind seeing a movie tonight. Roxy's air-conditioned, too. Only trouble is, it's in New York. Oh, there's Baxter. Hey, hey, we're back, and guess what we got? Okay, everyone out. We're here. Oh, 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 Come on, Beba. 
The uh, snack bar is open if anyone wants refreshments. Now that we're alone, can I ask you something? Ask? What's your name? John. You won't forget it, will you? Huh? <sighs> Howdy, John. Howie. Uh, how about an introduction? I'm afraid that won't be easy. See, uh, she has amnesia. We don't know who she is. Her mind's a complete blank. You're kidding. I'm not. Complete blank. <laughs> What is this place? In Africa. Uh, I okay, know. Okay, Maeva, this is the headquarters of Safari Express. Okay, Maeva, then you do know her name. No, no, it's just uh, the only thing she remembered, the word Maeva. So, uh, that's what I call her. They're the ones I was talking about. John Baxter and Howard Spring. The best two guides around here. And I might add, in all Africa. Oh, very well, sir, then. Uh, oh, send them to me at the Safari Game Hotel, will you? Certainly. Right away, sir. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I'm in a very big hurry. I understand. Goodbye. Ask me, the best thing to do is to take her to Father O'Mallory's mission. Look, John, uh, I was thinking, if you want to, uh, I'll take her. No, no. Well, thanks anyway, Howie. I'll do it first thing in the morning. But believe me, I appreciate the offer, I really do. But frankly, I'm not too sure about your intentions. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the clothes. I feel like a princess. Clever of you to guess my size at first sight. Not so much first sight as uh, first touch. See, uh, I sized you up yesterday morning during our fight. 36, 26, 36. Did you touch me? Sure. You see, I've already forgotten. I guess I didn't make much of an impression. Oh, John, that's not true. Why don't you... Why have you stopped? Please, I'm sorry if I surprised you. You called me John, I shivered. All the way down to the brake pedal. Well, uh, you were saying? What was I saying? Uh, I've forgotten. Yeah, it's getting to be a habit. <laughs> But what's happening? Nothing. We're just being shot at. What? Why? I guess they're trying to kill us. What is this? I don't give explanations. I just got orders to kill you. First, do you mind if we pray? Go on, pray. Thanks. Father, art in heaven, hallowed be by thy name. Thy kingdom come. Well, be by then on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Be by the bread. Give us our sisters. We forgive those who trespass against us now. <laughs>
I find Father O'Malley? He's over there, tutoring Paddy. Say it. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Peace on earth, goodwill Father O'Malley. Oh, John. I don't know why you waste your time with that parrot. He'll never learn. If it is God's will, he'll talk, John. It's easy enough for God. He's letting you do all the work. <laughs> Hey, I see you've brought out the artillery. <laughs> the workmen found it, digging the foundations for the new mess hall. Ah, so you've got yourself some new transportation, have you? Yeah, I uh, managed to pick it up cheap. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, it runs pretty good. Not the Land Rover. It's what you got inside it. I didn't come equipped, though. <laughs> I added the extras. You see, Father, it's such a strange feeling. I can't explain. It's like, um, it's like... I really don't remember anything. You understand? Yes, I do. You're saying that that strange word is the only thing that comes to mind. My Eva. But doesn't that seem like someone's name? Oh, possibly a word in a native dialect. We'll find out sooner or later. But what matters now is that this poor child is safe. You know, I just thought, could it be you were bitten by a tutsi fly? No fly could leave bruises like this. Why don't you let me have a look at them? Take a look. Now, those are bruises. How about this one? Hmm. How about it? Would it be asking too much to know if you had any others? No, Sergeant Ryan. You weren't trying to kill them. They were trying to kill us. Thank heavens for Biba. She saved our lives when she dropped coconuts on them. You see, she was up a tree. Over. What in the world was a lady doing up a tree, over? Uh, that was no lady, Sergeant. That was my chimpanzee. Had agreed. Huh, that clears that up then, doesn't it? If she's a chimpanzee, she has every right to be up a tree. I'll expect her in my office for interrogation at her earliest convenience. Over and out. Boy, are you a sicky. Beg your pardon? What was that? Ah, uh, Sergeant, um, Hadwicky, uh, that's Navajo for over and out. I've hung your clothes in the cupboard and put your suitcase over there. I think you should be comfortable. Thank you. I hope you'll have a pleasant night. Thank you very much. Well, it's not the Grand Hotel, but I guess it's okay. Uh, let me do that. Tomorrow I'll take you to see a doctor. I hope he says he can't do anything for you. Why? Why? Because when you get back your memory, you might recall you have a husband. Excuse me a minute. You never were good at playing Schubert. Why can't you take a painting like other monkeys? <laughs> uh, listen, Maiba, there's something I want to tell you. But I, uh... I don't know where to start. Yes, tell me. Oh, B, but for heaven's sake, leave us alone. Ever since I took you to see the circus, you're impossible. Don't come back on a unicycle. got a little dust in her eye, and I was just trying to get it out. Perhaps it was stardust. However, I'd like to see you get a little dust in your tracks. What kind of a place do you think I'm running here? But no, we weren't doing anything wrong. Were we doing anything wrong? No, nothing. See? Now, look, Boyo. Nobody said that doing certain things was wrong, but not in a place of God. Move along now. See you tomorrow. Good night. Well, Monkey, you make a pretty good stool pigeon. Good night, John. Very well. If you insist, I'll go and say ten Hail Marys for thinking bad thoughts. <laughs> the Land Rover wasn't a bad exchange. It's in pretty good shape. But Sergeant Ryan says he has to hold it as evidence. <laughs> Not cheap. Oh, yeah, we can pick it up later at police headquarters. We were lucky they abandoned it. He didn't change the tire. Why do you suppose those guys wanted to kill you anyway? I don't know. Look, Johnny, if you ask me, I think it's about time we got the hell out of here. Sometimes you sound just like a broken record. You know that, Howie? You've never had it better. 
Look, we did 10 months in Europe, 18 months in the Pacific, and we've been out here five years. Come on, John, don't you ever get homesick? You kidding? When did we ever have a home, Howie? <laughs> yeah, but we're not getting rich, either. We can do better somewhere else. Right this way, gentlemen. This is Mr. Van Dalen. Ah, Spring and Baxter, I suppose. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm Baxter, and he's Spring. Alphabetical order is part of our agreement. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, yes, please sit down. Well, I called you here to make you a proposition, a job, for which I am prepared to pay excellent compensation. Ah, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, how much? Oh, shall we say, uh, 100 thousand dollars. hundred thousand dollars, is that what you said? Yes. I'll be a giant. Uh, would 20% uh, advance be all right? No, 50% now. And the other half when you've done the job. Waiter, uh, what will you have? I have a whiskey. I think I need something strong. How about you, John? It sounds good. I'll have the same. Oh, all right. Yes, Two sir. whiskeys then, please, sir. No, waiter, some milk, too, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Van Dalen, uh, what kind of a job is it that you're proposing? Ah, uh, to transport a shipment of goods which is going to arrive at the port of Guanica on the Zambezi to Banuka. I must be sure it will reach there safely, which is why I have turned to your organization. I don't understand why you're taking all these precautions. I mean, uh, the road from Guanica to Banuka is not exactly a donkey track. Hard top all the way. Besides, it's not even a rainy season. Yes, exactly, Mr. Baxter, but this shipment has to go another way, not on that road. On another road, maybe, or on trails, and nobody knows it. Might be difficult or almost impassable, but after all, if one pays $100,000, there must be a reason. Uh, put the milk on the floor over there, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Why do you haven't put the milk on the floor? Oh, well, there's a reason for that also. <laughs> hey, listen, old buddy. Hundred thousand bucks is no joke, huh? I'm ready to go along with him. Uh, what kind of shipment is it, eh? Um, oh, for Pete's sake, John. I mean, uh, it's money, isn't it? No, no, Mr. Spring. If your friend has scruples, it's well to respect them. Arms, Mr. Baxter. Uh, while we're on that uh, subject, do you mind if I... Uh... Mamba, for bites you, you're dead in three seconds. But how did you know it was there? Oh, it was easy. The thing was coiled around my ankle. Oh, oh how repulsive. Uh, uh, well, where were we? Oh, the, the, the arms. Uh, thanks. Uh, who's supposed to get... The name is Udi, and he's head of a native tribe. I know, you can count me out. Why? Are you serious? I know his brother, King Bulu. He's as honest as the day is long and a good tribal head. But this Udine is a bad man, and I'm not going to be the one to help him. Let's go, Howie. Hey, John. You know, sometimes I don't get you. Think it over. I mean, what do we care for some sort of litigation between uh, Bulu and Odin, anyway? Come on, Johnny, you heard him. Don't you have any sense? Yes, Mr. Spring is full of good sense, while you, Mr. Baxter, seem to lack it completely. Why don't you just do your job and let them fight it out among themselves, right? No. No, that's not how I see it. Anyway, thanks for the whiskey, the milk, and the, uh, pistol. Look, uh, Mr. Van Dalen, I know my partner pretty well. If he says no, then it's no. But, uh, but this is a job that could easily be completed with Baxter or without him. I'll be staying here. Hey, what's the matter with you, John? You got too much sun or something? Look, if you don't do this job, I'm gonna do it by myself. Nobody's gonna do this job. What, pass up a hundred people? Something out of it, Howie. Crazy. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. Let's talk. Look, huh? there's no way I'm gonna do it. So cool off and pack your bags. Now, wait a... Look, I'm gonna do this job by myself, and don't try to stop me, you got that? Or else... Or else watch out. I don't want Udi and making war on Bulu. You got that? You're really going too far. Buddy, no one tells me what to do. Hey! Break it out! Excuse me. You 
you ask for it, Howie. Take that! How dare you! I'm beginning to, to see what kind of a guy you are. No loyalty. Yeah, well, I'm lucky out for number one. Whether you like it or not, I'm telling you right now, I don't like it. I couldn't care less. been a little misunderstanding. Not from where I'm standing. It looks perfectly clear to me what's been happening. Only an idiot would make a mistake in view of the evidence. Yeah, but that's what you've done. <laughs> and that makes me an idiot. Well, if you say so. <laughs> ah, smart. What's that mean, Sergeant? It means I'm not an idiot. Who said you were? You did. Smart, smart Sergeant. Sergeant. And what are you two? A couple of parrots? Come on, Paddy. Peace on earth, goodwill to Try man. Try something from the Quran. Maybe he's a Muslim parrot. I don't care if he's a Buddhist parrot, just so long as the silly bird starts to talk. Pretty Patty, now will you please cooperate? Pretty! Ah, about that at last. But not pretty Patty, peace. Peace on earth, goodwill to... She's pretty, she's pretty! It's too bad your tongue is not as quick as your eye. Oh, but you're right, she's a fine example of a woman. Hey, Beaver, John's arriving. <laughs> what took you so long? Hurry along this way. I ran into a little obstacle. A little obstacle, was it? Mm, two elephants had a head-on collision. <laughs> hey, Beaver! <laughs> ah, where's my Eba? In her room. I caught a glimpse of her a minute ago. Beaver, have you John, missed me? John, welcome back. John. Right? Yeah, right. That's good. Happy to see me? Very much. Hey, right, what do you two think you're doing? Aren't you two ashamed of yourselves? Doing God knows what in front of the sisters and the children? Not to mention the parrot. Come on, Biba. Now then, Jen. You take her directly to the doctors without doing any sightseeing along the way, boy. -o. Not on my day off. Don't worry. I'm not worried. This is the right kind of doctor for me. I mean, for my head. You kidding? Dr. Walker's a celebrity. They call him the White Witch Doctor. Besides, he's the only doctor for 300 miles around. Well, if you say so. Excuse us, Dr. Walker? Mm -hmm. No excuses. I only received by appointment. Ooh. Look what you made me do. You made me fall out of bed. Mm. 
It's me, Dr. Walker. John. John, what a pleasure to see you. Come in. Come in. Excuse me, Doc, but it's an urgent case. The lady here needs your help. Seems to me she's bursting with good health. Oh, she sure looks pretty good. It's not a physical thing, it's mental. Mental, you say? I've completely lost my memory. I can't remember anything. Not even uh, my name. In that case, maybe you can help me. I'm here to forget. Are you sure you want your memory back? Why, of course. But such good fortune as yours is rare to come across. But if you insist, we can try. Do you think I should? Trust him. Now then, John, get out and take that damned animal with you before he polishes off all my disinfectant. I'm sorry, Doc. Come on, Bieber. Come on. <laughs> Get undressed. Get undressed? Where? Behind the screen. Behind the screen? It... You mind if I leave my hat on? Everything. Oh. There you go, you old lush. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll be performing operations. You want to smoke, too? <laughs> Don't eat the filter. Are you also waiting, Dr. Walker? In a way, yes. Uh, not for myself, though. Dr. Walker, very good doctor. I give birth to four babies same time but not know what to do, because I only have one back. Me ask Dr. Walker what I fit do. He give me much good idea. He say, name babies after days of the week, and every day make you carry that one. Make no mistake, oh. So Monday, me carry Monday. Tuesday, me carry Tuesday. Wednesday, me carry Wednesday. And me carry Thursday on Thursday. That right. How about Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? I, I take long weekend. Uh, she with you? Um, uh, yes, I just don't know what to do with her. Why is that? Your mom cannot all right in head? No. Um, actually, she's my sister. She just thinks that she's a monkey. <laughs> oh, I should have noticed family resemblance. <laughs> John! Right with you, Doc. Oh. Eva, snap it up. What's the verdict? Well, physically, she's an extremely fine piece. I mean, what I really mean to say is she's extremely well. I mean, what I mean to say is, what I really mean is that she's uh, extraordinarily well. How much do I owe you for the visit? <laughs> yes. You must give her one glass of this stuff in the morning, two before each meal, and another before she goes to bed. On the rocks. But, Doc, this is whiskey. And if that doesn't work, double the dose on the second day. If you just do as I say, in a few days, you'll wind up in a drunk tank. You trust me or not? Sure, sure. But calm down. When you get angry, you light up like a tree on Christmas Eve. I'll tell you what. We'll start the treatment straight away. Throw this down. It's not bad. It's better than milk of magnesia. You see? The cure begins to work. Already she remembers that wretched childhood cure. She's on the road to recovery. Yeah, ask me, she's on the road to alcoholism. Come on, Bieber. And leave Yorick behind. He's seen better days. Bye now. Goodbye. Dr. Walker, he cure your sister. I see. Hope so. She sure needs help. Dr. Walker, very good doctor. Thanks, a long Tuesday. Good luck. You told her I'm your sister? Not you, Bieber. I thought she was your girlfriend. Who does she look like? Your mother or your father?
You know, maybe Dr. Walker is right. Why bother to remember? It's like being born all over again. Oh, boy, you're the prettiest newborn child I've ever seen. Where's Biba? Could be she's got problems too. No. I know what it is. She's jealous of you. Huh? You ought to try and show her some affection. Oh, that's all I need. Come on, help me look for her. Beba! Beba! Beba, be a good girl and come on down from there. Come on. Attempts to get rid of her have failed incredibly. Now that woman is a great danger. She might recognize me and then, and then the jig would be up like that. No weapons for you, no war with Bulu, nothing. Nothing, you understand? But I make her agreement. Sign pact giving away mining rights of Batongas. Good only when I become king. Yes, I know, I know, Udin, but you've got to get rid of that woman. And then you can have your weapons and rule over all the Batongas in great honor and glory. <laughs> the woman, where is she now? Yeah, she's at the Catholic mission. Fortunately, the Jeep was insured. Safari Express won't lose a red cent. What did Sergeant Ryan have to say? Oh, he said he didn't like the way the whole thing stank. I shouldn't think so, the way that thing was burning. With me in it, damn near. What a terrible thing, that poor innocent fella getting blown sky high. I really feel sorry for the guy. How's that for fate, huh? If he hadn't escaped from jail this morning and Biba hadn't been jealous, it makes you think. God works in mysterious ways as wonders to perform. I guess so. Hmm? Excuse me. Times I had to tell you I'm running a mission here, not a body house. Oh. Excuse me, it's not my fault. I'm trying to help the girl. To do what? Stand up? Oh, how beautiful native music. I'm afraid not. It sounds like a warning. Oh, yes, a jungle telegram. Right. No, don't leave me alone. <laughs> Wait a second! Hurry! Hurry! Father Carlos! 
Father Carlos, we have to call the police. But, Father, we can't get to the radio. You're right, Father Carlos. We can't leave the building. They have the schoolhouse around with this bench. Look like Courtney? It's fine. That's strange. I hear thunder. That's not thunder, it's the Tom Tom, Sergeant. What are you talking about, Tom Toms? I'm sure it's thunder. Bit of bad weather there, have you? Hmm. Hot kind of thunder to have this time of year. Wait, Father. The great Wooten speaks. Terrible misfortune has befallen my tribe. White woman, with you very evil. You must give her to us, or else we will attack mission. Away from the windows and keep down. Hurry. Do as he says, children, and hurry. Let me through. I think they're looking for me. No, my boy, away from the window. or something, my Eba? On the contrary, I'm very well. And my name isn't my Eba. It's Miriam. Uh, Miriam? You mean Dr. Walker's prescription has restored your memory? I don't know. Maybe. But one thing's certain. Udin's face stayed. Father, could you stay with her? The father, I said, with her, not on top of her. Until the shadow of the falling sun touches. Until the shadow of the falling sun touches here. If you don't give me white woman, I will destroy everything. Mission buildings, church, and I will kill the bird that talks. Udin, if you do that boy, you're a cowardly snake. I said, when shadow of sun hits Bia, everything will be destroyed. Burn to the ground. Houdin has spoken. Patine still sent us a miracle. If you're not after helping us now, we'll lose the whole works.
Now it's all clear. It happened in a place called Banunka. That's Batanga territory. I was an assistant to an engineer called Jeffrey Fleischer, chief of an expedition organized by a company called um, Mining Associated Enterprises, British and American. Mining Associated Enterprises, British and American. M-A-E-B-A, Maeba. Why, that's the word she was always repeating. Yeah. We were prospecting in that area and discovered a big deposit of uranium. Uranium? What they use exactly is... Exactly what they use to make atom bomb. But how does Udin figure in? Oh, he figures. He figures. The discovery of that uranium was the cause of our misfortune and the death of Jeffrey Fleischer. One night. One terrible night. <laughs> I don't know how I managed to escape from those savages. But what happened to me afterwards? Or even how much time passed before I woke up? I may be an idiot, but I can't understand what an ignorant thing like Odin would want with uranium. Oh, I don't think it's all that strange. Even an idiot could figure it out. Oh. Right, Miriam? Mm-hmm. Would you tell you a chimpanzee to hold still and to touch nothing? All right. You heard the man, Beba. Ah, oh, that's why. Yeah, it's obvious. Dean's a blockhead. I guess you got that much, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't got that much. In fact, I haven't understood a blessed thing. Look, Sergeant, the man at the bottom of all this is a real phony called Van Dalen. Van Dalen? Yeah. But he's an engineer who was part of our expedition. I thought he got killed the night we were attacked. Yeah, big deal. Who's deal? You're a dummy. What do I have to do to get through to you, Sergeant? It's obvious who set up the massacre. He offered $100,000 to me in spring to bring a whole load of weapons up to Odin. Now, what would he do something like that for? Because, um, so he could become king of the Batangas in a tribal war with his brother. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely out of the question for an outsider to ever become king of the Batangas, huh? Not at him, darn it all. Odin, if he could be king, then he could give that no-good skunk Van Dalen the mining rights. Ah. Oh. That's why he was trying to have me killed. Exactly. He must have figured you had the goods on him. How would he know you lost your memory? What's that? Someone lose their memory? Hmm? 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 <sighs> a man has to uh, be arrested immediately, Sergeant. I'm serious. Who? <sighs> Peanuts. Ooh. The name is very familiar. Check the one till he's caught me. <laughs> Why don't you just forget it, Sergeant? Not on your life. I'm going to institute the most rigorous search. Have you got all this written down? No. No? No, Sergeant. No? No. No. So you see, we have to start all over. Help! Disarm that creature. Put down the gun. Come on now, put it down, Beaver. <laughs> Suppose you think that's funny. Congratulations, Buddha. Son at last. No problems about your successor now. Well, in very bad man. He not anymore have chance to become king. Thanks to my magic baby son born healthy and strong. If without help of midwife, wife will still be heavy with child. You gonna have the consecration rites on the island of monkeys? First have ritual on island of monkeys to make happy witch doctor. Then have baptism admission to make happy father of Mallory. <sighs> you're pretty sly that way you hedge your bet. Only don't let the father know what you're up to. Yes, I know, John, and that his land is a mineral more precious than gold. So you also know that if Udin helps Van Dalen take the land away, you've had it. I am not afraid of Udin. But when he receives the weapons, you should be afraid of him. How can I stop him? Listen, I'm me Jellicoe. Between us, we can do it. I know how the weapons are going to be shipped. And with a little bit of luck, they'll never get to their destination. You're a good friend, John. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Hey, 
Hey, John, there are tracks. One truck, not very long ago. I might have guessed. Howard knew I'd try and stop him, so he got a jump on us. Come on, let's go. Do you think we can catch him? I hope so. Got to park right in the middle of the track, right, old buddy? You can get out, Howard. The trip's finished. Don't ever say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Listen, John. Move that thing. How about it? I'm tired of always making you see it my way with fists. I'm glad, me too. So listen to me. Now wait. I won't take long, so don't interrupt. First, let's dump that truck in the river with its entire load of arms. You keep the dough that Van Dalen gave you up front and then split. Well, uh, so you had an accident. What do you say? Huh? Well, this kind of trip can be dangerous. Sure, sure, right. Yeah. There's just one little detail. We're not carrying weapons. This is just a bunch of nothing. It's, uh, it's not worth getting all hot under the car over. You're not fooling anyone. I don't get it, old buddy. What do you care anyway? I'm free to do as I want. Right, so am I. I want to stop those weapons. <laughs> well, you never change, do you, old buddy? There's only one. Out of the try. way! I'll take care of him. Wrong <laughs> fault. You asked for it. <laughs> 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 on the truck. I'm not me. This is the uh, truck with the weapons I told you about. I intercepted it on these Agar Flats. I see. And these are a couple of the guys who were transporting them. Call the sergeant, will you? Aren't you the chap whose jeep was blown up? <laughs> and the chap who called us about the attack on the mission? You're causing us a lot of trouble. <laughs> what? Now then, where are all these weapons, eh? <sighs> right here. Fresh off the boat at Guanaki yesterday morning, destined for Bonuka. For delivery to Udin, who wants to be king of the Batangas. Oh, man. Really don't want any thanks, Sergeant. You can take all the credit for yourself. Oh, kind of you. Nothing. You two insane. Unload the you weapons. You guys talk are about crazy. It. There ain't no weapons in there. That's right, man. Oh, Oh, I've got legs. Thank Christ, one of us got away. Somebody got away? Yeah, somebody got away. My partner. <laughs> Howard Spring. I'd hope to keep him out of this, since he's my friend. <laughs> Some friend? <clears throat> now, tell me a little about these weapons. Yeah, they were to be used in a civil war between the Batangas. Sergeant, come and have a look, will you? What have you found, Courtney? Bombs, Sergeant. Tomato bombs. Machine guns are loaded with cucumbers. And the explosives are sauerkraut and hot dogs. Hmm. 
If this is your idea of a joke, I think it's in damn bad taste. Uh, Sergeant, I wouldn't. Courtney, tell those two to take their vegetables elsewhere. Hmm? Mind it doesn't explode. Ask me, you better not let a couple of tomatoes fool you. If I want to be fooled, they don't have to ask you. <laughs> so long. <laughs> shipment, which was on a truck that took another route. We fooled you and you blew it. You might as well face it. You haven't got a chance in hell of stopping those weapons. Jellico, let's move it. Hey, Baxter, you ain't gonna leave us tied up like this. Hey! Hey, Baxter! Come back! Baxter! Untie us! I told you what you wanted to know, didn't I? Please! You can't leave us here! Me. Out of my way, Bongo! I won't get another chance! Uh, and I won't get another bottom.
Well, nothing has gone wrong, Mr. Wilkes. A simple accident. I think it's much better this way. Uh, I have the mining concession for the Banuka territory, uh, signed by the man who in three days will be king of the Batongas. Oh, no, 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 no. No, the arms aren't that necessary, Mr. Wilkes. You see, you see, uh, Udin will become king through hereditary dynastic rights. Oh, yes, 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 of course. I'm more than sure. After all, he is the legitimate heir. <laughs> no, Bula will not be survived by either his wife or his sons, since they will all be at the, uh, at the consecration ceremony on the island of monkeys. Yes, you see, this island is just the right size to serve as a target for a couple of bombs dropped from a plane. <laughs> yes, boom, boom. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Wilkes. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Keep calm, Sergeant. Keep calm. I'll give you all the proof you want. Just do as I say. Very well. But only because it's you, I am about to add another pearl to my long string of successes. Courtney, if anyone wants me, I've gone to see Mr. Van Dahlen at the Safari Game Hotel. There's an arrest on the horizon. Courtney, the key, please. Yes, Sergeant. No, she isn't here, Jan. She went off to Greenwood. She absolutely insists that she had to go and talk to that phony Dutchman. Over. Dallin. You know, he's dangerous, Father O'Mallory. Can you do something to stop her? Over. That's easy to say. Do you think if I could stop a woman from doing what she wanted, I'd ever have become a priest at all? Over and out. Oh, my dear Miriam, how happy I am to see you. I bet you are. Oh. Come in, darling, come in. Oh, I can't tell you how, how shocked I was when the operator gave me your name. Please, please sit down. You know, I was so convinced that, uh, that, uh, that you couldn't have possibly escaped from that dreadful massacre. Oh, I can imagine. Such a conviction must have thrown her into a state of shock. I can just see you passing anxious, sleepless nights thinking about it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, I've always managed to sleep extremely well. Because you were sure I was dead. It must have been gratifying to know that I disappeared from circulation. My, my, my. You have such a remarkable sense of fantasy. No, it's not fantasy, it's reality. Well, if it is in fact reality, then I think you must have some proof. Listen to me, Van Dahl. Oh, yes, of course, Miriam. Why don't we make a deal? Dear? If my being around makes you uncomfortable, then for a very modest fee, let's say $200,000, I could disappear. <laughs> oh, Miriam, if only you told me about this a little earlier. You see, I... Oh. Excuse me. The telephone. Hello. May I speak to Sergeant Ryan? You should be there now. Um... I'm sorry. Uh, wrong number. Wrong number. Oh, as I was saying, if only you had talked this over with me before, just after we arrived in Africa, for instance, I would have told you then exactly what I tell you now, and that is that there is no reason at all for you to vanish from circulation. Sergeant, how nice to see you. <laughs> Yes, but since when have I become so important as to have the honor of special surveillance by the police? I beg your pardon, sir. Really, it wasn't my idea. Oh, really? Miriam, darling. You know, I didn't know you cared. Oh, very well. I wanted proof. But it's all right. John Baxter will testify. John? Baxter, John Baxter's a visionary. He sees things that aren't there. Oh, they say that he's in love with the chip. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you've been misinformed. Oh. She's not his lover. She's his sister. Ah, his sister? Well, I suppose it's all right then. I'm not very British, though. Come on, Beaver. Beaver, come on, let's go. I've been looking for you. 
So you found me. Uh, what did you want to go see Van Dalen for? It could have been very dangerous. I had to try. I wanted to trap him, but that one is more cunning than a monkey. Oh, excuse me, Beba. So, what happened to you? I went after Howard. From the explosion I heard, I'd say that this time the truck uh, wasn't loaded with tomatoes. Ah, uh, Miriam, there's something I wanted to tell you. What? you out here in the middle of nowhere. And because I have a problem, we have to keep our business undercover. Of course, you realize that. Well, you mean you're not angry with me, Mr. Van Dalen? I mean, I lost up the job uh, pretty bad. No, no, no. For heaven's sake, no. What are you saying, Howard? You won't believe this, but I'm happier that it worked out this way. That Udine is not worth a burnt-out lamp bulb, as we say in Holland. And I'm ready to pay you the rest of the sum we agreed on. You know, you can do a much better job by yourself. Really? Yes. What job? Oh, come on, man. Now, don't tell me that you haven't caught on. Now, what are those arms for, if not to get rid of Bulu and the whole lot of his family and hangers on? You know, you can do this better than anybody in your little safari express plane. When they have the consecration rites on the island of monkeys. Hey, man, you know you got to be crazy. Why? Look, I think you got the wrong idea about me. I can't go and kill helpless, innocent people. Weren't those arms you transported just for that? Yeah, I guess you're right, but transporting arms is one thing. Only it's not the same as killing someone. Well, you're not lacking in hypocrisy, I see. <laughs> well, never mind. It was nice seeing you again, Howard. My pleasure. Goodbye. Yeah, see ya. Oh, Howard, by the way, I forgot. Good girl. You came back. We were worried about you. You mustn't be jealous. Let's talk about it. I'm sure among us girls we can find a way. Uh... Biba, what's the matter? What do you want? Biba! Biba! Why is she behaving like that? She wants us to follow her. Let's go. We better take the jeep. Drive through that. We'll have to go on foot.
It's okay, Howie. Try not to talk. You've got to save your strength. It's no use. I've had it. It was Van Dalen. Yeah, I might have guessed it. Why? He wanted me to take plane and drop bombs on the iron monkeys. He's planning a massacre. If you don't stop, he'll do it by himself. You have to stop it. I will, Howie. Give me a hand. I'll take yes. him to the mission. <laughs> Take them to village. Take also car. I speak, you must listen. I don't have a lot of choice. Go ahead, speak. My heroic warriors now kill you very slowly, according to ancient custom. Why? I'd prefer something a little quicker. Not for you. You are one who destroy my weapons, so you must die very slowly. Hey, that's a pretty rough way to treat a guy, wouldn't you say? It's much rough way, yes. The rougher the better. Who need be more gentle with white woman? Hey, wait a second. What's she got to do with all this anyway? She got to do because she's going to be wife of Udin this very day. Haven't you ever heard of woman's liberation? I can handle woman. Have no fear. Don't count on it. Girls like her eat guys like you for breakfast. That's not my cup of tea. I like bread of bacon and eggs. <laughs> Beautiful, strong with you. Now you be my wife. Of course, Udine. I always your wife. I not want John Baxter. I want big Udine. And me, Queen of Batanga. Now you must kiss me. First close eyes. That's right. Otherwise, love not perfect. Close your eyes. Now, I give you kiss. Oh! <laughs> 
No, 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 I'm sorry. There's no use going on about it. I've already shown you my pilot's license, and I'm willing to put up the full value of the plane as a deposit. It's not a question of trust, Mr. Van Darlen. If I let you have a plane, even for just an hour, I could lose my job. Yeah. Look, but nobody else needs to know, just, uh... I'd still have my conscience to deal with. As far as I'm concerned, that's all that matters. Yes, well... Well, I, I won't insist. We'll meet again, sir. Goodbye. Best of luck to you. I hope we'll see you again, Mr. Van Dornen. Sir! Sir! I'm sorry, but you can't stay here. Yeah, but I have permission to take this plane for one hour. May I see your permission, please, sir? Oh. Yes. No money, sir. Ah. Well. I don't know who he was, but he had a right like Joe Lewis. No, no, Mr. John, you can't take this plane. I have to fill up with petrol.
me. Don't go near the falls. They're a downdraft. You gotta pull up. Hey, man, it's dangerous. A ceremonial egg returns to the place of its origin. Ah, my children, it is a pity I couldn't have been the one to marry you. It would have been a grand occasion. Yeah, well, we would have liked that too, Father, believe me. Miriam's uncle absolutely insists on being the one to give away the bride. Yes, and we better keep him happy. He's giving us a castle for our wedding present. How about that, Father? You're a lucky man, Boyo. <laughs> Where is Biba? Biba? Another attack of jealousy, I guess. You'll take care of her, won't you, Father? Of course. Mind you, you'll just have to get used to being an old maid. in two weeks. It's a new record. Do me a favor, John, and don't smash that plane, too. We only got it out from the UK last week. Don't you worry, sir. We'll leave it in Nairobi when we catch the plane to London. Good day, Doctor. Have any your breakfast? Mm, just a little tonic. Something for my health. Carry on. 